All right. This is uh, this list is based solely on 12 bar blues and pretty much straight 12 bar blues. G7, C7, D7. Although depending on how much time I burn up here, I might uh, be able to talk a little bit about you know some of the jazz uh, blues changes, or maybe I'll do it in a different video. Um, so we've talked about straight pentatonics. There's another kind of pentatonic scale that has positions too that um, is, I can't remember, people refer to it in different ways, but I basically talk, I, I basically refer to it as a, a dominant pentatonic. Um, instead of one, two, three, five, six, it's got one, two, three, five, seven. Now sometimes I'll put the six and seven in there depending on the shape. It, the six is fine, but it's got a seven in it rather than, and that way you can use it on uh, um, seven chords, which we have tons of in bluegrass. Um, I, my last couple of videos were about major, and the sound of major is not the sound of blues. G7, C7, and D7 are not in a major key, quote unquote. The key of G is a G major seven, C major seven, and D7. That's what those notes dictate. Well, in the blues, everything's everything's a flat at seven. So um, you you have to kind you can. You don't have to. You can kind of um, uh, come up with shapes and things that work for that. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about the theory of blues and why we use certain things and stuff like that. I'm just going to show you shapes to practice so that you can see the chord form, see the pentatonic quote unquote dominant shape, and um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about tritone substitutions because learning a few simple shapes and then learning to see where that tritone sub is, or actually really only, you're looking at a, a chord a half step above the chord that you're headed towards. That is the tritone sub, but people think of it in different ways. For me, it's really easy to go, okay, I'm going to a C7, I'm going to think C sharp 7 leading into it. And and, and a lot of those tritone sub uh, sounds are where the blues guys started. So, um, where the jazz guys started. All the a lot of those those tritone sub um, things are where the jazz guys started creating those super cool lines in bluesy type tunes in the bebop era things like that. Later on, and it really it, that boils down to again here's a little theory tidbit. That's an ascending melodic minor scale, what we call jazz minor. Um, it dictates that chord form. So. Um, that the one that I'm talking about. So it is really very jazzy, but you don't have to know a lot about the theory of it to get these shapes. Okay, ready? Three minutes in and I've already gabbed too much. We're gonna do G blues. There's your, there's your, that's a G9. You can just play G7 that you recognize all the time if you want to, nothing wrong with that. Or that G. G13, G9, G9, regular old G7, G9, G13. You can see all those chords. If you don't know what I'm playing, and I'm not going to review those now, there I've done another video on, on that. I think it's called Six Dominant Chords or some Six Dominant Chord Shapes or something like that. They're the ones that I'm talking about here. I really don't, I, once I find something I like, I don't mess around with it too much. I use it a lot. So, um, the, um, the chords we're going to play are the simple chords are just going to be G7, C7, that's C9, G7. Here's, let me show you the shapes for each one of those chords. There's three shapes, but they're all, they're all the same five shapes just slid around on the fingerboard. I'll teach you the G ones, and then I, maybe I won't go back to the, I won't show you all the, the C and D ones because you can figure out how to slide uh, a G shape like this. Um, you, know, you can figure out how to slide that up here and go... That's a C shape. 
but here, anyway, here's the shapes. There's six, six or seven of these because some of them bridge in between two chord forms. I look at, um, I look at the the overall, the overall uh, chord, and I try to find these pentatonic shapes. Well, we know that this is pentatonic. Well, I'm going to get rid of that tonic and turn it into a seven. So you got. That's cool. Slide it up to a C. D. So those work kind of cool. Now take that one, and we're gonna we're gonna use this shape again. And this time, instead of doing, we're gonna slide it up to there and go. Here's your seven, seven one three five six seven tonic uh, octave. C. D. C. Cool, right? That works. So now here's another cool G9. It's kind of linking a couple of them. I'm going to start on that same note we did in the last one, but I'm going to extend up. Get a 9 in there. Two notes on three on three different strings. One string only has one note on it on all these shapes. Because I use like to use the same right hand fingerings too. So there's uh, shape number one, shape number two, shape number three, right? So now we're going to go up to the third of the chord, start on the second of the chord, but go. This is based on a, your D position, but you're playing. There's a seven instead of six. You're going to go seven, 